Bing. Call Crime Stoppers Bahamas today at 328-8477 or from the Family Island, 242-300-8477. It's safe, and the life you save may be your own. This public service announcement was brought to you by Crime Stoppers in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. One thing there is no debate about is that PTC has the best rates. Now, the best rates just got better because you pay half the price of the other guys with your PTC home internet and mobile services combined. Switching to PTC is a no-brainer because I pay less with PTC and get super fast internet with speeds up to 600 megs. The other guys, their internet only go up to 105 megs. Get all the internet you want at half the price when you bundle your home internet and mobile. Visit a BTC store to make the switch today. Conditions apply. This is the ZNS Network, providing radio and high-definition television services for the entire Bahamas. ZNS Network is operated by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is located at Harcourt Rusty Bethel Drive, Centerville, Nassau. Our programming is designed to inform, educate, and entertain. We invite you to join us. The following is a preamble of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Whereas 481 years ago, the rediscovery of this family of islands, rocks and keys, heralded the rebirth of the new world. And whereas the people of this family of islands, recognizing that the preservation of their freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. Now, know we therefore, we the inheritors of and successors to this family of Allens, recognizing the supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual, do hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation founded on spiritual values and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It's Tuesday, April 5th, 2022, and the Morning Edition is live. On today's show, the debate continues over gender-based violence. We take a look at childhood cancer, we're tracing our bohemian roots in the diaspora, and the Queen's Baton makes its way through North Eleuthera. So let's start the morning off right.
edition is brought to you by We Buy You Sell Company, your leading hurricane impact windows, doors, and tile specialist. If everything is under control, then chances are you're not going fast enough. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. Well, I'm under control, and so what does that mean? Oh, no, you're definitely not under oh, control. Well. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> yes, I am under control, definitely and I'm not. not moving fast. <laughs> I'm moving at a regular my mm. age pace, and I'm happy with it. Forty. Let's no, no, not go there because you and I are about Forty. two years apart. <laughs> well, glad to see you had a good time yeah. in Illustria yesterday. I was able yeah. to visit Harbor Island, got to see your folks. Also went down to Spanish Wells. I didn't know you were so famous down there in Illustria. Everybody, I go into Illustria and viewers and they say, how is Ladon? How is Ladon? Everybody asks me, how's Ladon? But nobody, even even here in New Providence, nobody's asking me how I'm doing. It's like they like it's only about Ladon. Oh. Well, uh, well, I... Uh, How is Ladon? How is Ladon? How is Ladon? Don't do that to Ladon. Don't say that to Ladon. They said, Ladon. Fisher, have you eating ice cream and grits? I'm talking about the big eat. Don't forget now <laughs> tomorrow for our What's On Your Plate. My two good friends, mm. Philip Styles and Mrs. Mm. Sinclair over there, are uh -huh. down to earth. They are going to have their big cook-off today, and you all, you're all invited. Okay. And you know, the soup right. and everything. So everybody come on down to uh -huh. see what the competition is going to be. Where, Who's going to win? Down by down home. Uh, farm on uh -huh. Cowpen Road, they're okay. cooking soup the day they were, they were bragging all weekend. I had my horse in the race with my good friend oh, Philip, but I've changed my mind now to uh -huh. Sinclair because he said he has some secret ingredients to put in the soup, so it's mm -hmm. going to be great. A lot of folks are going to come on down. So look for the results tomorrow on what's on your plate. Who do you think it's going to win? You had my friend Philip's soup. You haven't tried Sinclair's soup? No, I haven't yet. tried Sinclair's, but I'm, I'm going to go with Philip. Philip had some really good soup the last time, so I'm going with him. Yeah. Yeah. We know Absolutely. LaDawn has not been right all year, so uh, Philip, you're in trouble, <laughs> Sinclair. Let's go. Now let's take it out to the streets where uh, Antoinette Smith is standing by with your morning traffic. Good morning, Fisher. Good morning, LaDawn. And good morning to the rest of the entire Bahamas. Your morning traffic report is coming to you live from Robinson Road. And it's one of those active areas at the 7 o'clock hour. The pace is no doubt about to pick up, though, for the hours to come. Now, joining us this morning, as always, is Corporal Patrick Kemp of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing this morning? Uh, good morning, Antoine, and good morning, Bahamas. All right, so if you watched yesterday, you know, we talked a lot about the excuses us motorists tend to make when we make a mistake or two on the road. And I spoke to Camp a little bit yesterday about the excuses I tend to make. And you said, Antoine, that's no excuse. You have to have your license on you. Why is that so important? Well, but first and foremost, we need to be able to identify the drivers that are out on the streets, that are utilizing these vehicles. It's good, too, especially when, when we would have cleared the scene. We want to know that we have the correct information. Some persons tend not to give you the correct information, and it's hard to locate these persons at a later date. Besides, Crystal, if you notice right there, I'm sorry, Antoine, if you notice that the rear of your driver's license, it clearly states that this should be in your possession at all times, okay? Another thing, if you notice, you should be in the possession of your insurance at all times. And I have mine with me at all times, and this is now law. In fact, I want to remind the motor public, if you're, not, if you're not in possession of these documents, that you can be detained and these documents um, brought to the station. Also, we had enough of the excuses, Anthony. Uh, there's a lady, and she watched this show every morning, and I know she's probably watching now. Yes, I'm speaking to you. Uh, the lady who was sewing in her eyelashes while she was driving. I don't know what special ability that you have to be able to do such a thing and then I mean, uh, stay focused on the road. I want you to know that that's wrong, because we had a debate on that, and it shouldn't be in a debate. And I want you to stop that, okay? You need to focus while you're driving, and to all the drivers you need to focus while they're driving on the streets. The camp, what if I have a picture of my license on my phone, you know? Oh. I tend to forget my license on my other bags from time to time. No, no, Anthony, that's not an excuse, okay? Uh, especially with te technology the way it is now, you can alter your driver's license, like poisons tend to do. Fraud is a very serious thing. That is a trend that's picking up in our country. And on your phone, is not good enough. Okay, considering, like I said, you can edit um, a lot of stuff. We need to see that in person, and that should be on your person at all times. All right, Campbell, I got you. I'm going to take that warning. I hope I don't do that again. And that's all the time we have for now in this segment. Fish with my dawn. I'm going to send it back to you.
Thanks a lot, that's a new one, sewing in your eyebrow. Well, we're waking up to 73 degrees, mostly clear. Winds east-southeast at six miles per hour, humidity 88%. Now, the remnants of a frontal boundary across the central Bahamas will gradually diminish as high pressure progressively builds across the country today. For all areas, weather partly sunny to sunny and warm with isolated showers mainly near the boundary. The daytime high temperature, 84 degrees Fahrenheit, overnight low of 72. And as we look ahead to Wednesday and Thursday, Mostly sunny, breezy, and humid on Wednesday, 87 in the day, 73 at night. And then on Thursday, basically the same, mostly sunny, breezy, and humid, 87 in the day, 72 at night. Police called to the scene of a homicide last evening off Malcolm Road. Press liaison officer Superintendent Audley Peters tells us what officers found on the scene. On their arrival at a residence, they met two males lying in the doorway, uh, both of them suffering from injuries as a result of gunshot. EMS technicians visited the scene and following their assessment, one of the males was deemed uh, to have no signs of life and the other was transported to the hospital where he's being attended to by the medical practitioners. The details of this incident are somewhat sketchy and so at this time, we'll reserve comments on what and how this event occur. The debate over gender-based violence continuing to dominate national headlines with the call now to stiffen both the legislation and the penalties to be imposed on those behind such heinous acts. Senate President the Honorable Lachelle Adderley is pushing for the reform of the country's justice and social systems, stressing that such a move is necessary to protect the most vulnerable among us. Cases of baby Bella. Heavenly Tavisis, Carissa Culmer, and the 14-year-old child who was impregnated by a man almost three times her senior, only for him to receive a slap on the wrist sentence, reveals that our system is in need of critical legislative and social reform. Some victims choose not to report domestic violence or sexual crimes because of fear and lack of protection. We must not judge these victims, but we must ask ourselves, what can we do as a society so that these victims feel supported, protected, and encouraged to come forward? This is not a political football. This is beyond politics. Senators passing several private pension bills in the upper chamber on Monday, the proposed pieces of legislation on their final leg before becoming law, allows for the bridging of services for retired public servants. Also passed was the National Honors Amendment Bill. Monday's Senate session also included the first reading of a compendium of financial bills to further bring the country's financial services sector in line with international standards, as well as bills to reform the justice system. The business of the Senate picks up tomorrow at 10 a.m. The Public Hospitals Authority is responding to claims of a surgical backlog at the Princess Margaret Hospital. The authority making it clear in the release that there may be significant wait times for non-urgent surgical procedures at the hospital resulting from the suspension of non-emergency surgical procedures. And this is a part of the ever-evolving COVID-19 management protocols coupled with nursing shortages throughout the system. The statement also points out that PMH continues to prioritize all surgeries with procedures based on the critical nature of each case. Four new COVID cases confirmed in the latest release from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. All are females from New Providence with a travel history within the past 14 days. 11 cases are in hospital, but none in the intensive care unit. Active cases stand at 97 with four new recoveries. Cable Bahamas and other corporate partners giving back to those in need with the launch of the Helping Hand initiative. Volunteers have taken over the Hands for Hunger Pantry on Carmichael Road for the week, packing parcels and stacking shelves. Many people don't know, but Hands for Hunger, all of that telecommunications, equipment, minutes, infrastructure, we provide free of charge to Hands for Hunger to make sure that the work they do, it, they can do it and focus on providing assistance to as many consumers as possible. It's a lot of work to feed people, so when we are able to have corporate partners on board that support and see the vision of the work that we do, um, you know, we're just so ever grateful. Um, it takes a community to feed the amount of people that we do, and so this initiative is just very timely. Um, it continues to help us to further our outreach.
We've got to give women an opportunity to lead as well. In my experience, they've been as competent, they have been as invested in their careers and their families. So I'm extremely excited to be leading this. From a Keo Bahamas perspective, that restructuring was driven by the level of competence and excellence that we found in so many of our women leaders in our organization. I'm delighted that we're not only the leader in enabling connected lifestyles and experiences, but we also have women at the center of everything that we do in our leadership journey. at Home Care and Electrical and Home Decor. Your one-stop shop on Joe Farrington Road, just west of the traffic light. We carry a full line of electrical and plumbing supplies. A huge stock of appliances upstairs, refrigerators, stoves, freezers, washers, dryers. Plus, we have all the household items you need. Right next door, you'll find Andros Beauty Supply for all your health and beauty needs, from hair colors, facial creams and soaps, to weaves and caps and so much more. Home Care and Electrical and Home Decor and Andros Beauty Supply. All in one building, Joe Farrington Road. Open every day, including Sunday. At Home Care, we guarantee you the best prices in the Bahamas. Yesterday was observed as National Census Day, and officials at the Bahamas National Statistics Institute used the opportunity to officially launch Census 2022, which goes digital for the very first time. Here's Carla Palmer. Some 1,600 numerators were sworn in this Monday. The occasion was in recognition of the beginning of Census Day in the country. They pledged the oath to privacy. Having undergone extensive training, the numerators were charged to take their responsibilities seriously by acting managing director of BNSI, Nerissa Gibson. Yours are the faces and the voices that the householder will see and hear. And it is your interaction with them that will determine the level of coverage. We have concluded that you indeed understand your role in this exercise. And so take it not for granted that you have chosen to come alongside the NSI to undertake this most important national exercise. Size. Reportedly, a similar exercise also took place simultaneously on various family islands. Chairperson of BNSI, Gabriela Frazier, says the advancements in technology at BNSI have been a long time coming, as for the first time, the census is also being conducted online. We, as a nation, are finally here at this moment to launch an exercise essential to our well-being. You have committed to working with us to execute this critical exercise, and for this, we are free. Chief Census Officer Kim Saunders notes how they have their work cut out. On May 2nd, our second new data collection met, interviews by telephone, and the traditional face-to-face -face interviews, but with digital assistance, specifically tablet, will begin. Minister of Economic Affairs, Senator the Honorable Michael Alkidas, thanked the group for their expression of patriotism in what he regards as the most important socioeconomic and demographic exercise conducted in the country. As it provides a thorough profile, people of a country, their age, sex, household relationship, marital status, employment and income status. Such information is needed by all of us for informed decision making and is an, and is an absolute necessity for policymakers, planners, both the government and the private sector. Unlike much of the globe, a troubling health concern is rearing its head more frequently in children. A pediatric nurse discusses that and other common ailments impacting the nation's youth with our Cleopatra Murphy. The past 10 years has seen an uptick in children diagnosed with cancers, according to 20-year nursing veteran Rebecca Johnson, who says this ranges from leukemia, the most common, to various tumors. In recent years, in different oncology cases, in pediatric, I know when I first started pediatric, that was, it was so common to see a child with cancer, but now we see a lot of that. The senior nurse, head of pediatrics at the Princess Margaret Hospital, could not provide statistics, but says the local increase appears to be across the board from infants to adolescents. Globally, cancer in children has been trending upward with the American Cancer Association reporting that approximately 10,470 children in the U.S. under the age of 15 will be diagnosed with cancer this year alone. The American Childhood Cancer Organization adds that an estimated 15,780 children from birth to 19 are diagnosed with cancer annually. 
When it comes to local outcomes, Johnson says it varies, but a number of factors can determine that. First of all, some, some type of cancers are more, the disease process is, is more severe than others, more aggressive than others, so it, it depends on that. Sometimes it depends on, in terms of family support, in terms of bringing the children for treatment, things like that. Sometimes the, the availability of the resources here, all of that makes a difference. We have an excellent um, team. While one of the more worrisome ailments, Johnson says there are other illnesses afflicting the pediatric population. With babies, children, you always you tend to have a lot of respiratory illnesses. Um, sickle cell is you know, very, very common in ethnic groups such as African American, um, Caribbean, African, of people of African descent. So you see sickle cell diseases, sickle cell disease, sorry. As for adolescents, Johnson says many of them are being diagnosed with diabetes and high blood pressure due to lifestyle and nutrition. Sometimes they have an opportunity to speak to parents and remind them, you know, sometimes go back to the old ways that we would do when we sit down and cook meals for our children, making sure that the meal is well balanced, they're making sure they're getting enough fiber in the diet, getting enough carbohydrates, getting enough um, fruits and vegetables, some vegetables a lot of times our children, you know, children are going to be picky eaters sometimes, but you need to find healthy foods that they like and try to encourage them to eat healthy food. To parents, Johnson says a treat is fine sometimes, but limit a child's intake of processed and fast foods, especially in young children, to ensure they grow up healthy. Sadie Kerr's primary school students getting hands-on experience on how they can use science, technology, engineering, arts and math to mitigate the effects of climate change. The youngsters participated in a week of activities and seminars on the topic and also engaged in various projects on the issue. Senior Mistress Lynn Thurston praised the students for their creativity. My heart went out to the students who won their, their trophies and their medals this morning. I, I was elated with them. The projects are awesome. Out of this world, I must say, those children truly amazed me, and I am very, very proud of them. The program can go to higher heights from here with more children getting involved and more partners coming on board with Mrs. Brown, our science teacher helping her along the way with it. So I look for greater things with the project. And as we head to the break, we take a look back at today in Bahamian history. On April 5th, 1935, the first American to win the Nobel Peace Prize for Literature, Sinclair Lewis, paid a visit to Nassau. Also on this day in 1997, 53-year-old Perry Christie beat out Dr. Bernard Nottage and was elected leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, succeeding Sir Lyndon Penling, who had served in that post for previous 40 years. resources of the Bahamas play a critical role in supporting Bahamian livelihoods. For example, the fishing and tourism industry, which include fishermen, seafood exporters, hoteliers, dive operators, restaurants, and others. Collectively, they generate approximately $1.5 billion a year. Therefore, we must respect and preserve what we have. These resources belong to us. This is my livelihood. This is my livelihood. This is my livelihood. So let's all do our part to maintain our local economy and a good quality of life. Remember, if we take care of nature, nature will take care of us. Queen's Commonwealth Games bought on after arriving in the capital to much fun front Saturday continued its tour on Monday. It was a comfortable boat ride first into Spanish Wells as the baton was accompanied by officials from the Bahamas Olympic Committee, the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture, and British High Commissioner to the Bahamas, Sarah Dixon. A parade by students and John Canoe led the delegation to the Samuel Guy Pinder School, where they were addressed by BOC President Romel Knowles. We're here today really to celebrate what being a part of the Commonwealth really means. Our adversity is the same, our struggles are the same, but we're one people. 
On gender equality, we're also here to promote gender equality as well. Whatever the men do, we believe that women should have equal rights as well. Equal pay. So thank you for receiving us. It was a warm, warm welcome. The students feeling right at home being able to feel and take pictures with the baton. After that fanfare, it was on to the Harbor Island All-Age School, and the students there had performances that outdid everybody. They stole the show. Commissioner Dixon, proud to see the islands being a part of the festivities. Both Spanish Mills and Harbour Island have really welcomed the baton. I think they understand about the success that Bahamian athletes have had in um, events like the Commonwealth Games and are super excited to see more medals won in the summer. Well, they do say it's better in the Bahamas, and I'm feeling like this baton is having one of its best legs. It's already been travelling for 115 days, but it's here in Harbour Island and it's had the warmest of welcomes. Local Commonwealth Games President Clarence Rowe glad as well to see the island students appreciating the tour. Well, carrying the Queen's Baton around is always a hectic job to do. And so it was a very full schedule, but we got what we needed to do. We got it accomplished. And I think the most important thing is that the average person, the person who would not really be a part of a relay or who would never be a part of the highest levels in sports got to interact with it because that's what it's all about it's about not just sports by itself because it's not just for athletes but it's for every citizen of the commonwealth to be able to feel a part of the commonwealth and to feel the unity that this is supposed to inspire the bahamas games are back set for july 6th through 40th 2023 right here in new providence 10 teams will compete Abaco, Andres, Bimini and the Berry Islands, Columbus Isles, Eleuthera, Exuma and Ragged Island, Grand Bahama, Long Island, Michael and New Providence. And it's estimated that more than 2,000 athletes will compete along with 500 officials. It will be softball for men and women, basketball for men and women, track and field men and women, lawn tennis men and women, swimming men and women, uh, soccer men and women, and then we're going to uh, we're going to add uh, a, a beach soccer component. And then uh, volleyball is the same thing. And they, uh, again, the introduction is to introduce uh, uh, the additional component of beach volleyball, again, to make use of the same facility. And then you have uh, bodybuilding, powerlifting, boxing, cycling, baseball, uh, youth Olympics. Uh, which, which, which would be something that we are attempting to do to try to encourage the growth of Olympic sailing among the youth of the, the country. And then there's uh, regatta sailing and then there's golf. So that's a total of 16, 16 disciplines. And after being ratified over the weekend, our 55-member Grafter Track and Field team now getting ready for the Games Easter weekend in Jamaica. Coming off a stellar performance the last time the Games were held, B3's President Jamaica Archer was asked whether there's any pressure to replicate that success. I think the Team Bahamas have always managed to know how to deal with the pressure. We compete under pressure. And so this is no different from any other career of the games. The Bahamas per capita has always been the greatest success of any games, and that would be evidence in the world indoors, where we were to play sixth in the world. And if you look at the Bahamas as compared to Jamaica, well, our population is very different, and the Bahamas continues to pack the heaviest punch. And so the pressure really is on us. We impose pressure, and our standards would reflect that. I mean, if you look at our standards, we feel the team that we believe can medal. And uh, I'm excited about going to Carifta, and I'm excited about what Team Bahamas will demonstrate to the region. There's a spark of greatness in each of us. That spark is called personality. Individual gifts and talents provide the fuel to set that spark ablaze. Each child has the right to an education which values their personality and nurtures their talents, while teaching them to be respectful to their parents and their cultures.
have a very interesting guest in the studio with us this morning. His name is John Qua II, but to many of you, he's known as Christopher Davis. And recently, he, along with the Bahamian delegation, visited Ghana to soak in what, they, what that country has to offer and to better understand our culture and ties. Christopher or John Qua, welcome to the Morning Edition. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, and good morning, Bahamas. So for all of us that are wondering, where did the name Jan Kwa originate from? And give us what connection this has to the Bahamas. Well, Jan Kwa is actually the Ahanta, a Khan dialect from Ghana, for the man that we more commonly know as John Canoe. And of course, he is the namesake of our predominant national festival, John Canoe. But he is also commemorated throughout um, the Western African diaspora as well, tying us to our numerous countries from Central America and South America and throughout the Caribbean. And share with us more about your foundation and the organization that you're part of. Well, the foundation is called the Sankofa Flamingo Foundation. Initially, we started, you know, simply as an edutainment um, kind of entity where we were going to publish a book, and that is how all of this started. But as we connected with the people of Ahanta, right there in southwest Ghana, and we learned about the cultural connections that we have in heritage, of course, through our festival, John Canoe, and many, many other different aspects, you know, it just grew and grew into something that was uh, much, much bigger to where I had to incorporate and build up a sort of Bahamian dream team of researchers and cultural stakeholders to kind of go over there and begin this um, unprecedented cultural exchange. So how's that research coming along in terms of compiling that book? Oh, well, it's, it's been great, you know. Um, this all takes us to a little village in southwest Ghana in a Hunter region known as Princess Town. And the research, the more that we learn about um, Jian Kwao, a.k.a. John Canoe, um, the more we learn about the Hanta people is the more that we actually learn about ourselves. And some of the similarities are just too eerie. Um, as a matter of fact, the uh, paramount chief of Dix Cove has a striking uh, resemblance to our Minister of Tourism, you know. So uh, it's just a serious feeling of familiarity. And this is what added to um, the research experience as well. Um, just to know that these people and we share something that holds so much intrinsic value. And I was just honored to be able to make this connection um, that, we, that has been lost for about 300 years now. Christopher Davis or John Kwa, thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning all Edition. Right. And all the best to you, your team, as you compile that book. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, Fisher, sure. well. Very educational, looking forward to yes. read, reading that book yes, one day. But don't okay. forget the big cook-off today uh -huh. between Sinclair and Stiles. Down the Earth Farms, everybody invited, 5 o'clock. Celebrity judges in studio. And are you judging? Are you, you helping him? You and I will judge ingredient? tomorrow when we show what's on your plate so you can okay, stay tuned to right, the results. Right. You can make it down there uh -huh. later on today. But make sure to stay tuned into the Zedness Network for news as it happens, news and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition at 6 30 and the Bahamas tonight at 7 o'clock. I can't wait for 5 o'clock this afternoon to taste off. Who's going to win? You says, talk about me and I love my gut, right? Look at you. All Enjoy right. it there, everybody. Have a good morning, Don't everybody. Good morning, <laughs> She's right here. Call her. <laughs>to look at how we can better raise our region's children. This week's program is called Maternal Health Part 2, and that's because in our first season we looked at maternal health, but there have been so many questions coming out of that program that we felt it deserved a part two. So stay with us. My Child and I continues in a moment.